One. Two. Three. Three. Howdy, howdy, it's me, that broken brain bitch. And welcome to episode four of my starter deck upgrade series. Put your thinking caps on, girls, gays, days, and everybody in between. Cause we're gonna crack this case. Let's dive right in. So, it's a blue-white deck. We've had mono blue decks and we've had a deck with white in it, but this is the first time we've seen these two colors together. Now, when it comes to standard, at least, I associate the Azorius colors, Azorius meaning the combination of white and blue, with control decks. This deck, most assuredly, is not a control deck. Which is fair, because honestly, when you first started, did you want to spend... 15 minutes every game slaving over every little detail when you could be out there wreaking havoc with big ass dinosaurs and summoning monstrous demons and you know having fun that and the learning curve for control decks is quite steep nobody is gonna play your game if their first five games are all losses because they picked the control deck, not fully understanding what they were getting themselves into, just because they thought the man on the deck box was handsome. He can get it though. That's something that these beginner decks have done well so far. They have just enough synergy to pop off some of the time. So, and this is huge for new players, you're gonna win some of the time, even if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, sheesh, talk about the actual deck, why don't you? <laughs> Alright, let's dig in. The early game is actually pretty solid. That being said, I only won a single game out of the five test games. I wish that the early game cards were four ofs for the sake of consistency, but alas, this is but a pipe dream. I'm glad that Unyielding Gatekeeper is a one of because it's just clunky. And we have another one of in Forensic Gadgeteer, which might be interesting later on. Maybe. Next, once again, we have another one of Alkist Proft, Master Sleuth. This card is perfect for this deck, but it's a mythic rare, so it makes sense that they only put one in. Wizards is a small indie company, you know. They gotta make their money somehow. <laughs> Moving on, we have the best card in the deck, Private Eye. The board wide buff is huge. And the elusive bonus is just woo, so tasty. Chef's kiss. Ironically, the next card is the worst card in the deck. Magnifying glass. Three mana for a colorless mana rock. I guess that's fair. But having to spend seven mana for one investigation which you then have to spend two more mana to activate. Nine mana to draw one card. Well, oh, but you get to do it more than one. <laughs> no. It's genuinely awful. It's simply outclassed by literally every single other card in the game. Pretty much. The only situation where this card shines is in late game top deck wars. And even then, you're paying a steep premium to get that one extra card. 
Moving on, we have a few mediocre flying detectives. Griff Not Tracker, Cold Case Cracker, and Granite Witness. I'm getting rid of all of these chumps to make way for better cards like Private Eye and a new addition that I'll talk about later. And don't think I forgot about No Witnesses. Other than being phenomenally thematic, it's a great card to have whenever you fall behind on the board. That being said, this deck's main win condition is overwhelming your opponent with buffed up detectives. So it's a bit anti-synergistic to have a board wipe in your board-centric deck. Yeah. Up next is Ezrum, Agency Chief. This badass is king of the deck. He's everything this deck wants and then some. He's a flyer, he's a detective, and he has artifact, think clue token, synergy, that cost one mana. I'm loath to spend a single mythic rare wild card on a beginner upgrade deck. But this one is quite tempting. If money were no matter, easy for it. Next up on the list, we have Hotshot Investigators. This card is just so much fun. Or at least it would be fun if it had any actual synergy with the rest of the deck. There's a couple of cards that want to get bounced, but more often than not, this is purely a tempo play. They're like an off-brand flex tape. They don't offer any permanent solution to your problems. And last, and kind of least, we have Agency Outfitter. Six mana for a 4-3 flyer. Yuck. It does tutor one of the better cards in the deck in Thinking Cap, but the price you pay for that, it's just not worth it. And think about it like this. How much of an impact does plus one, plus two have on turn seven? Because it doesn't even come out on turn six. Because that turn, you spent all of your mana to play the card and draw it. It's huge in the early game, but as the game progresses, so too does the power level of the cards in play. So it's just not relevant by the time you draw it. And there you have it. That's my impression of the deck. Now, let's see about pimping out this ride. Alright, let's get the show on the road, shall we? First up, I want to make some four ofs of these early game cards. Novice Inspector, Thinking Cap, and Perimeter Enforcer are all excellent cards in this deck. So, let's see more of them. On the other hand, we have Seasoned Consultant. This is an example of a win more card. It's only effective when you already have a significant board presence. A better replacement is 10th District Hero. While she doesn't start out as a detective, she becomes one. And if you're lucky enough, she can give your entire board indestructible. Nice. Yeah, pretty good. And as a 2-3, she's a solid body for, say, Thinking Cap. Next up to cut, is Unyielding Gatekeeper. It's only a one of, and honestly, its inclusion in this list is tenuous at best. It's an easy cut, just like Forensic Gadgeteer. There just isn't enough artifact spells in the list to justify its inclusion. There's plenty of artifacts, there just aren't enough artifact spells. I see what they were going for, but it's just not sturdy enough, so it too gets the axe. Projector Inspector is a perfectly fine card, just not in this deck. Its synergy with turning cards face up synergizes well with the original deck, but I'm cutting all that out. 
So this inspector loses power because of that, and therefore gets cut itself. Ah, the next two cards. Bless my soul, they put the best two cards right next to each other. Alquist Prof, Master Sleuth is a powerhouse once you have the mana necessary. And Private Eye is so simple, yet so strong. I would add more Alkists, but he's a mythic rare. But Private Eye is an uncommon, so in he goes. And on the exact opposite note, let's just get rid of some cards. Magnifying Glass, Griffnot Tracker, and No Witnesses simply don't make the cut. Now it's worth noting that up until this point, I was like 7 or 8 cards over the 60 card limit, which is an uncomfortable level of over the top. I was quite nervous, but these cuts were exactly what the deck needed to balance everything out. Whew, what a relief. Moving on, we have Granite the Witness. It's not a good card. Simple as that. Compare it to Wojek Investigator. It costs one less, has plus one total stats, and has the potential to draw numerous cards. The Granite Witness does have the Disguise synergy, but once again, I cut that all out of this deck, so it's gotta go. And lastly, we have the late game bombs. <laughs> uh, I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> oh man, yeah, this deck's bombs are fucking trash. Ah. Except for Ezra. Hotshot Investigators is a very fair card, but that's not good enough. We, we need unfair, we need broken cards, okay? An Agency Outfitter is just awful. I'll say it again. Six mana for a 4-3. Garbage. Blech. Did I replace these Halitosis heroes with some epic creatures? Nope. I cut them for the deuce. Gotta take a the deuce. I significantly lowered the mana curve with my changes so far, so not only does the deck need more card draw in order to function, but having two mana generate a clue token is quite handy indeed. Okay, I've got my thinking cap on, and I've got my calabash pipe in hand. Let's play some games. Alright, we're in game. Almost forgot to hit record, but I remembered just in time. So, starting off pretty good with the Novice Inspector. Always feels nice to have an early gameplay. And we have a 2 drop into a 3 drop. And clues to draw. And we're sitting pretty. Opponent doesn't have a 1 drop to counter our 1 drop. Always feels nice. And I played the Perimeter Enforcer instead of the 10th District Hero because the 10th District Hero, and you just saw it be removed, uh, the 10th District Hero gains power based off how many cards you have in your graveyard. So, you want to play out your other creatures, have them eat the removal, and then you can play your 10th District Hero and use those cards that are in your graveyard now to buff itself up. Seems to make sense to me. And I, I was thinking about mana efficiency when I played the Alkeist Prof here. Uh, it's likely to be removed. But it looks like they don't have it, or at least they don't want to use it yet. Because Alkis is a 3 mana play. And I have, like, I knew I was going to have 4 mana available the next turn. So, I play the 3 mana card this turn because I have 3 mana available. And then next turn, I can play the 10th District Hero and buff it up on the same turn. 
which costs four mana. And I have all the mana that I need, and I'm running short on cards, but I have the deduce. I've got the deduce. And I'm a little bit scared at this point, because they haven't really played much of anything. And they have two black mana, and nothing on the board. So I foresee a deadly cover-up in my future. So I'm not going to commit anything else to this board. It's already a three for one if they have a deadly cover-up. Which it's less likely for them to have a deadly cover-up with the fact that they just played single target anything. It's uh it's it's looking like they have an oops all removal kind of hand. Because, and here's the second 10th District Hero. Uh, they've had at least three hard removal cards so far. Well, let's see another little secret. They have more to come. Much to my chagrin. But I, they, my deck is pumping me up with the 10th District Heroes, you know? It's like, hey, you want some more 10th District Heroes? <laughs> Gotta give props to my opponent for waiting, having the patience to wait for me to empty out my graveyard before using their removal spells. Making it a little bit less likely that I'll be able to buff up future 10th District heroes. And whenever you see one card in a person's deck that synergizes with the graveyard, and there's the freaking hard removal. When you see one card that synergizes with something in an in opponent's deck, it's safe to assume that there's more of that kind of synergy. So it's prudent of them to... Have patience like that. That's good. And triumphant gay. Triumphant gay getaway. <laughs> Bye. That's the best kind of getaway there is. Okay. Anyways, gay shenanigans aside. We have a third 10th District Hero. Surely, they're out of removal at this point. Surely. Getting in with the 2-2 and the 1-2. Which is very significant, because it sets them down to 3. I kind of forgot about the fact that they're at such a low health right now. We're in a good position. We're in control of this game. It's the kind of position that I like to be in. I, I snuff out those little, little peepers. Little eyeballs. Creepers. Voyeurs. And they have the third Weave the Nightmare. And I even check, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? And they steal a Wojak Investigator, which stops me in my tracks. But I draw Ezrum Agency Chief, baby. God, I'm such a nerd. I love it. He gives me these cool green goo clue icons clue tokens. I don't want to use them because they're so cool looking. I'll use the amulet one and the boot one first, if the game allows me to. I know they consolidate. Uh, but I'll save the goo the goo the goo who are you 
gonna be tonight? That's the question. Who will who be tonight? That's the question. Ba, 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 ba. That song's a bop. Anyways, we now have air dominance. A 2 4 cannot trade with a 5 5. It loses its life and it must block because they are at 5 health. So, we have them in check. But, they find the, they find the answer. They buff up their 2 4 to a 4 6. They are no longer in check, essentially. Uh, I have to find something, and I'm searching. I know what I'm looking for, and I'm like, do I spend the mana here? Do I spend the mana there? Wait, no, I need to draw the cards. Like, draw, like, I don't want to play yet, and there it is. That's what I was looking for the whole time. Like, I was thinking about playing the Novice Inspector to get more clue tokens, but it's like, I already have clue tokens, so it's, like, it, it would be a waste of one mana to acquire a resource that I already have on the board. And thank God I didn't play it, because I wouldn't have been able to play the Private Eye. I would have drawn into it and I would have been one mana short and things would, like, they would have gotten, the enemy would have gotten at least one more turn. And that can make all the difference. But, I was lucky a little bit and smart a little bit and I found the private eye. And that made the 4-6 no longer survive the trade and things are looking juicy they do have a jasper flint laughing jasper flint and that card is so good i love this card it is so much fun to play with i have an outlaws deck it's like b tier but i love it it's so much fun there's just something about stealing other people's cards and using them against them that just fills my heart with joy. And they manage to heal themselves up seven hit points. Now I have to make sure that I don't use all of my clue tokens. And I don't know what I'm thinking here. Like I can target the private eye with its ability. That's one more damage. You know, like, I don't... I was under the impression that I could not target the Private Eye with its own ability, but I'm certain now that that is not the case. You can target the Private Eye with its own cannot be blocked ability. Not that it really matters, because it's lethal either way, but had I missed lethal by one, I would have felt really dumb. And here I am just kind of floating about, just kind of trying to get exact, you know, precision. There you go. GG! Alrighty, I was able to get three wins out of five games with the upgraded deck. And one of those L's was against Mono Red Aggro, so I mean, shit's gonna happen. It is what it is. None of these starter decks are designed to be able to withstand the onslaught that is red deck wins. It is what it is. As I mentioned before, they just need to be able to pop off some of the time without needing the wrinkliest brain in order to pilot it. Moving on, Wojek Investigator was probably the most consistently good card added to the deck he showed up again and again and he felt good again and again 
10th district hero coming in with a very close second and even after the changes the winner of the best card in the deck is private eye the pure serotonin release from seeing those blue numbers is juicy and you get to make your biggest baddie unblockable for a turn Ooh, yes sir <laughs> and i can't go without mentioning ezra agency chief he literally saved my ass one game i had one top deck to go before falling behind on the board and who else shows up but Ezrim himself ah it was glorious and that's my experience with the deck i'd read it this is tough I'm going to say bottom of B tier. It's sturdy and it's fun. And there you have it, folks. If you made it this far, you're a f fucking legend. And I hope that your coffee is always the right temperature. Good luck and have fun out there, y'all. And I'll see you in the next video.